On today's Saturday news, AEW's huge Full Gear 2023 new signing has been revealed. Got a big women's war games announcement. WWE renew interest in Kazuchika Okada. And Ronda Rousey in Ring of Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready for the news time? My name is Phil Chambers and I'm joined by Salty Sea Dog, obviously. And Gareth is also here, I suppose. Uh, to talk all things wrestling news, but what have we got first, Gareth? He lures me in every time with that. Every time. Well, look, and I fall for it. He's look, he's, he's, he's adorable. You. He's adorable. He's adorable, Phil. Get him out of frame. It's my frame. <laughs> all right, here we go. So, AEW, the big old thing, the big old mystery, like, reveal of the signing, all this stuff. It's been the talk of the town, hasn't it, over the last week when it comes to AEW especially. And now it looks like we... Maybe know who that person is. Somebody's quite confident that they know who it is. Uh, that someone is Andrew Zarian, and he said this on the Matt Men podcast. And he said like he's been, he's been informed by somebody within AEW that this big, huge, like world class, one of the world's best wrestlers is what Tony Khan said in like a, a, a I think it was a Twitter post, and he said it in press conferences. This person is Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay, you know the same Will Ospreay. I think his deal's running out with New Japan Pro Wrestling at the end of January. Ne- like obviously the start. Of this year next year words those yes so that's happening and apparently yeah he's, he's going to be the person that's going to be the big reveal which is a bit of a shocker because obviously that deal with new japan hasn't officially ended yet but it could be something i think uh, dave Meltzer kind of theorized it could be a thing where they've already made a deal where like osprey is full-time all elite but then he could still maybe come back over to new japan do the big super shows that kind of stuff so maybe they would be willing to let him be revealed at this point and then that'd be a huge thing rather than him going to the WWE and then just having zero access to one of the best wrestlers on the planet so it does make a lot of sense if that is where they're going to go with that but that seemingly rules out the likes of mercedes Mane and a person who we're going to mention later on in this video as like people who could potentially be this big massive sign-in who could fall into that category of like best wrestlers in the world like maybe uh, also Meltzer said that just in a really interesting kind of side note as well on Thurs- Thursday's Wrestling Observer Radio he said that he's been told two different names by two different people when it comes to this big reveal so you get the feeling that nobody really honestly knows right now who's, who's going to be coming in so one of those people that spoke to him and said in one name could have been the same person that spoke to Andrew Zarian but then somebody else has said a different name so really it's like, oh, this seems like a very concrete, yeah, it's going to happen. But at the same time, yeah, it could just be a big old swerve and could be somebody else. I love it. We love talking about this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if it is Will Ospreay, it, it is a bit of an odd one with the sort of clash between the two contracts between New Japan and AEW. But I guess, like, mm-hmm. there's been theories of, like, either AEW sort of bought out the rest of his New Japan contract mm-hmm. or the, whether it's just some kind of working relationship where he's allowed to do both until January. But if they had bought out his contract well I mean it's like two months why wouldn't you just wait until January (laughs) that seems like a really stupid expense um so it must be some kind of thing where they can work together New Japan always do their deals like Wrestle Kingdom to Wrestle Kingdom um Mm -hmm. so it'll be like after Wrestle Kingdom that he will be free um so yeah I don't don't know it's quite interesting one Uh, the way Tony worded it in his tweets and things has been sort of kind of careful um Mm -hmm. in terms of like saying like it's someone that like the majority of the AEW audience will know and respect um, and things. So it's like, I mean, uh, or Will Ospreay would fit. I mean, personally, mm-hmm. I think I'm more fascinated by Will Ospreay going to WWE than AEW because that's just a strange thing. That's just yeah. new and different. Um, but yeah, I mean, Will Ospreay, wherever he lands, he's going to be a top, top talent. Uh, and yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see tonight, I guess, for it to be official. That's it. Will Ospreay just on weekly American television will feel weird and different. So I've exactly. done, yeah, either way right now. It's kind of insane that he's gone this far through his career and Mm -hmm. that hasn't actually happened yet. Um, But um, moving over to WWE, Women's War Games, it has been announced last night on SmackDown. So the show opened with Damage Couture welcoming Asuka into the fold, uh, barely taking full credit for bringing Asuka into (laughs) Damage Couture, obviously. Uh, They gave her a t-shirt, so it's definitely official now. Um, But then they announced the Women's War Games match and they challenged Shotzi, Bianca Belair and Charlotte to find a partner because they're going to war. Um, and then throughout the show, the damage control was just attacking random people in backstage that they thought could be their partner. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of the show, the partner was revealed, and it is the one, the only Becky Lynch joining forces. So it's going to be Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Bianca Belair, and Shotzi taking on um, Bailey, Asuka, Io Sky, and Kyrie Sane, which is 
an insanely talented lineup, yeah. and this match looks like it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Oh yeah, I'm so in. I'm like, I've, I've seen a few people kind of saying that, oh, it's been really rushed. It's been, wow, we're just throwing this together, really. This like build to the war games for the women's side of things. But sometimes you don't need like months and months and months and months to build up. You just put like a little bit of a grievance in there and then a stacked like double cage of people and you go, oh yeah, yeah, I want to see that. Yeah, and yeah. like you've got the, the, the inner kind of drama of the Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch stuff. Uh, have they fully sorted things out? Are they just kind of been on the same page because they just want to rid the world of damage control? Like that, that's got its own stuff in there that you didn't need weeks and weeks and weeks to go and tell the story because that story's been there for years. Like yeah. instantly, people have plugged in, we want to see it. I'm, yeah, I'm just excited. I, I was already kind of, the, the way they've kind of pitched this build up to Survivor Series, it's working for me. I've, I've just kind of been slowly escalating my excitement levels. And now at a point where like, oh, I wish it was this weekend. I've got to wait another week. What? Maybe they peaked too early. Maybe they have. Maybe next week it'll fall flat and we don't know what's going to happen. But I am right now ready for some war games. I just want to be, see people jump off cages with bins on their heads and fall through tables. Yeah, let me see that kind of stuff. Uh, don't know how I'm going to segue into this because uh, I can't remember the last time Shinsuke Okada. Uh, Shinsuke Okada, there we go. Shinsuke Okada, so, Okada, lucky spoiler, you. Spoiler, spoiler for the rest of the story, baby. Yeah, so I can't remember the last time Okada put a bin on his head and jumped off a cage, but you never know. Anything could happen these days. So, WWE, apparently, have renewed their interest in that man, the Rainmaker. Now, obviously, over the years, it's not really been much of a secret. WWE have had interest in Okada, but more often than not, he's probably looked at that place and gone, you know what, I don't want to just be another comedy character who just does stuff. Just, just stupid stuff just because I'm not fluent in English it's just pointless and that's what Vince McMahon just did with Japanese incredibly Jap uh, incredibly talented Japanese who were incredibly Japanese it's going really well this this particular story I, I'm, I'm enjoying it so yeah that's Nailed what it. tends to happen like well tended to happen anyway in the past uh, Vince McMahon just put him in like children like roles is how Dave Meltzer kind of uh, worded it in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer newsletter and within that he said that it, it appears that WWE's efforts to push Shinsuke Nakamura, that's where the Shinsuke stuff came from, um, their efforts to do that uh, in a way has been their way of showing Okada that like the times are changing, like we can't take like incredibly talented performers who just aren't fluent in English seriously we, we can we can we can make them look like mega stars really if we want to like but they're not quite maybe put Nakamura on that level, yeah, but they, they are just making him feel like a, a, a real deal for, for a change, isn't he? He's not just been somebody who's just been moustache twiddling, just being a bit like a cartoonish villain. He's, he seems like he's got a bit more credibility again. So that is all something they're trying to do for Ricardo, just to show him. And, and then part of this pitch as well is the fact that, like, Okada's 36 now. He's done pretty much everything there is to do in New Japan, isn't there? Like, he's, he's done everything twice over. And this style, this WWE style, and Okada and Nakamura are quite close pals like he's seen like uh, the Nakamura doing his stuff over the last couple of years and he's probably seen that the style's been a lot kinder to Nakamura's body than what say the New Japan style is so that is something that could be quite appealing as well uh, he did stress Meltzer in this report that uh, well uh, in this kind of thing within the newsletter that there's no indication that there's anything new to this like they've kind of added anything like in what maybe they've offered in the past or whatever it is if they have offered anything in the past but there has seemingly been more behind the scenes chatter about it so that's kind of that's the big update the fact that people are really talking about potentially what, what, what it would be like to bring Okada into WWE and I for one I'm so fascinated by this and it's, it's the same as what we just said with Osprey it's one of those situations where it's just I want to see what that looks like okay Carter being presented as the mega star he is in WWE, I would just yeah, I just want to see him at WrestleMania fighting Roman Reigns now for for the belt and just just give me that, give me that now. <laughs> Screw the story, I want to see that. It is, yeah, it's one of those fascinating things. It's like the matchups that you could get from it and just the way that he would be presented. It's just it's just such a strange thing mm. to picture a Carter in WWE. It like doesn't fit, and that's kind mm. of why I want it so much just to see what it's like but yeah they've changed the way they package their Japanese wrestlers recently and the, like I mean across the women's division as well with like uh, Asuka Ryosuke and uh, Kairi Sane they're doing loads better than they ever have done like in the past I mean Asuka's been one that's kind of gotten away from everything since the very beginning she's always been packaged quite well but um, like through the like in the pandemic when they started just letting Asuka be Asuka on TV and she ended up just cutting promos in Japanese but yeah. she's so incredibly charismatic that it does not matter what language she's talking it always came across on TV and then when they started doing the um, 
the Japanese promos for Kairi Sane and Asuka when they were tag teaming together as well. Like that was like yeah. a different way of packaging it that allows their and the same thing with the Shinsuke Nakamura promos now. It allows their natural charisma to come out in their like native tongue because they're far more comfortable with it, obviously, than trying to uh, speak English and be sort of charismatic at the same time. And it comes across, and it still works. Like you don't have to have everyone speaking English. It actually makes them stand out more when they're not. Like people can read subtitles. That's a thing people can do. Um, so yeah, I'd be fascinated to see what this looks like in a WWE fold. It's just yeah, it's just so strange. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. We'll see if he remains loyal to New Japan. He has liked for much of his career, but I, yeah, I just want to see see what happens next. Madness. Absolutely. Uh, but finally, speaking of seeing what happens next, Jesus, Ronda Rousey came out on Ring of Honor TV last night. Everything's going on today. Um, so this was at the Rampage. They did like a live Rampage last night and the Ring of Honor tapings after it. And Ronda Rousey came out to tag team with Marina Shafir against Athena and Billy Starks, which is actually a rematch of a match they had the night before oh. at a Wrestling Revolver show. The same Wrestling Revolver show that Swerve Strickland was on and Hangman Page came in after his match to beat the hell out of him. So they're definitely working quite closely with Wrestling Revolver mm-hmm. or AEW. Uh, and it's making for some interesting things. Uh, so, yeah, so Ronda Rousey on Ring of Honor. She came out to uh, Joan Jett's Bad Reputation, so she's got her music and everything. Like, the package is there, but there's absolutely no word out there whatsoever on, like, contracts or what's happening next or whether this is just a completely random one-off. The fact that it's on Ring of Honor on a taped episode is kind of fascinating that they just kind of throw that out there and then just let the internet go mad with it. Um, it's fascinating. I don't know what's going on, but it's there. And Ronda Rousey is, I guess, ever closer to signing with AEW. It's just another one of those things that was on nobody's bingo card for 2023, wasn't it? It's it's surreal. Very surreal. I, I, I imagine being in that Ring of Honor crowd. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. what? It's like, what on. is happening? <laughs> yeah, and imagine they, being the people that leave before the Ring of Honor taping finishes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, oh my god, what I <laughs> run back in. Yeah, it's I, yeah, fair enough. Like this, this is this is the cool thing that can happen nowadays. Like people can leave the the biggest like show in town and then go and explore some really really exciting options outside of it, where you, you can still get a lot, a lot of publicity and you can you can still be on a big stage where people see everything going on. And then the possibilities of what that can lead to, I do kind of need my Ronda Rousey theme the match now i just need it at some point because that yep. will be unbelievable and then you don't you don't know if that opens the door for something all elite and i get my mind now is just rolling off and, and i'm thinking of all these incredible matches you could have uh, in aew and just that division in general it wouldn't hurt having a ronda rousey in there <laughs> again would not would not hurt get, get if you look at in the sort of recent things she's done she did the thing on uh, lucha baba boom as well yeah like the spark feels there in these matches yeah. which, which was kind of missing through the like last WWE one so the, the like the, I guess the chip on her shoulder is kind of still there and the spark for wrestling is obviously still there as she wouldn't be going out doing independent shows and you'd like to think that they're just gonna they'll lean into whatever reactions there maybe within this like ring of honor AEW verse as opposed to kind of just going just smile be a baby fair they're probably yeah. just gonna go right we'll see what's happening if they want to cheer you we'll go with it if they want to boo you we'll go with that so yeah yeah, it seemed like they were cheering her at this, so. Yeah, you never know. The anti hero badass could be back. I'd be up for that. I'd definitely be up for that. But that is today's news. Thank you very much. And let us know down in the comments below what you think of all of these stories, including Will Ospreay and um, going to AEW yeah. and Okada going to bloody yeah. WWE and Ronda Shins- Rousey going to Shinsuke Okada. Shinsuke, Shinsuke Okada, Okada going to WWE. Can't wait. Well, let us know down in the comments below. Uh, click this video to continue your little YouTube journey and follow us over on Twitter. You can follow me at Phil My Chambers and you can follow Gareth at GMorgan04. And most importantly, have yourselves a bloody good day. Bye-bye.